and welcome back everybody for the last lesson of this workshop. It's not the last session. So we are now um, one and a half hours, the next one and a half hours, we will, together with Jano, um, do some modular code development. After that, there will be a outro session. It will probably not take half an hour. We will tell you a little bit where to go from here. General Q&A. So please stay around also for, for later. And just as a reminder, the next two Mondays, we offer completely optionally a session where you can come, ask any questions about the workshop, bring your own code, bring something where you tried it and it almost worked and we will help out and you will get an email about this. Let's go into modular co code development. It's uh, one of my favorite sessions and together with Jano, we will try to do something really, really fun. What, what are we going to do? Should we introduce ourselves? Hmm. Well, I'm Jarno, in case you haven't yeah. seen me yet on the, in the workshop. Yeah. Um, an RSE working, a research software engineer working at Alda. And I'm Adovan, a uh, research software engineer working in Tromso. So together we will do modular code development now, what to expect here, how to participate. The, the lesson is, has a title, type along. It will actually not be a type along. I think the best way to participate is to get really comfortable, you know, get your favorite tea, coffee. Still open up the collaborative notes. So you will, you will participate here through collaborative notes. We will try to make it like an improv session. So we don't really know what will happen. We will try to develop code together. It will be live coding, but we don't know where this is going and you can influence it. You can give us prompts. You can give us questions, suggestions. We will start with a simple example, but then we will try to improve it together here with Jano, together with you. I will be watching the collaborative notes I will be watching what Jano is doing. Jano will do the coding. It's stressful, it's also fun. Maybe we will make some mistakes, but there is really good pedagogy in mistakes, but then we will learn how to fix them together. If you go into this lesson, I just wanted to show that there is a little bit more than what we will do. There are some, there are some slides. And in the past, this session was a slide presentation but then we got the feedback to make it more participatory. We have tried discussion sessions. We have tried different things, but we think that this live coding format where you can tell us what to do can work really well. We, what are the learning outcomes? So there are a couple of things we want want to experience, but in, in, instead of talking about them in a like theoretical way, what is a pure functions? What are side effects? We've seen it in the testing lesson. What is the global versus local? How to really grow a project from very little to more, how to split things, how to reuse things instead of discussing in theory and we want to experience it while coding. So we have these learning outcomes in mind, but we want to really experience them instead of just talking about them. And we have some starting questions to get us started and to create context for us. And I will, I will copy them into the document. And you can help answering us. Oh, here we are. I will share it in a moment. Here. We, here we want to talk about modular code development, but we would love to hear what this means for you. And you might not have a concept of it yet. But when you hear modular code development, what do you think? And we will also tell you what we think it is. What is it for us? Um, also, what in your favorite programming language, it might be R, it might be MATLAB, it might be C++. In your favorite programming language, what, do you, what best practices can you recommend? 
if you could travel back in time and talk to your past self, so what do you don't know now about programming that you wish somebody told you earlier? And I understand this is more a question to those who already program for some time. And we have some additional questions here that you can you can help answering. Let's see what people answer and let's see what we think about it. So how about you, Jano? What what does modular code development mean for you? That's yeah, actually a good question. So I guess um I mean, many languages have things called modules, but that's not all of it. So I guess, I mean, it means basically isolating things into functions and making or functions like or similar units, like classes, for example. Um, but essentially, to me, the main point is that you can pluck a piece of code out of one thing and plug it into a different project and it mm -hmm. will work roughly as you expect it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, often, usually that means that you turn it into some sort of a library that you can import or um, link against or yeah. something like that. But um, it could also mean, in principle, just copying a file. Yeah. Um, it could be a function, be it could be a file, it, a function. Could be, yeah. it could be a package, it could be a module different names, similar idea. Yeah. And this is also what I wrote down here. For me, it also means I can copy paste a portion into a different place. It could be my second project and it still works if I design it in a modular way and we will show how, how to do that. It's about simplicity. It's about reusability. Very good points here. Reusability in other projects. Solid principles and ROS. Please explain the abbreviations so we may not be familiar with those so those who wrote please expand what that means what best practices start small and get better this is what we will practice we will start small and improve as we go what do you know now that you wish somebody told you earlier mm -hmm. less is more when to use classes and functions I think we want to go into coding very soon. Is there anything, Jano, you would like to say about... Yeah, what do you know now that you wish somebody told you earlier? But I don't want to well, put you on the spot, I can also answer. That's the, the one thing um, that is probably has the biggest effect is uh, just use um, version control, which we, of mm -hmm. course, have talked about a lot last week, and automated testing those have had a big effect and like, nobody told me that they exist kind of mm -hmm. good ideas yeah I, I mean i immediately realized how good ideas they are after the fact because i had already been struggling with things that they solve mm -hmm. yeah and do you do we design a new code project on paper before coding or do we start coding and plan then there are pros and cons in this case we will start with coding and then improve but we will still do a little bit of thinking so please continue yeah. answering but let's go into the challenge that we want to solve together here as a group in one and a half hours so we have a task and i will read it out and i will give the task to well to Jano and me we will so the task is we start with the data set it's temperatures recorded every hour at Helsinki airport during all of 2022. We wanted to have a data set that is relatively easy to understand. I can open it up. It's a comma separated value file. So here every hour of the day. So this was January 1st of January 2022. It was minus two degrees centigrade in Helsinki. And so we have this data that we got from somewhere. Here's the origin of the data. And now we give ourselves the goal. And the goal that we have at the beginning is that we want to plot the series of temperatures. We want to plot the first 25 measurements. 
we want to create a plot, we also want to do some very simple statistics to compute the arithmetic mean. And now we can imagine that uh, what is the starting point, and this is how many people work, this is how I work, I don't start from a blank paper and start typing. I often take a starting point, something from either my previous work or something from the internet. So let's imagine we found, we collected a couple of pieces of code from Stack Overflow, ChatGPT, some other, some other place. It's a Python code and we will together develop Python, but we will not focus on the Python part. We want to focus on the big picture here. So please stay with us also if you don't develop Python. We will keep the Python part really simple. We will not try to get the most elegant, perfect Python code. We want to solve a problem. And our starting point is that we somehow piece together this code. We will test it out. And once it's working, then our we will have some further goals. After we get it, get it to work, we want to plot not only 25 measurements, we will want to plot 100 measurements and 500 measurements. And then we will have one more goal. And that is, we want to then generalize it so that we can plot any number of measurements without changing the code. And we don't need to remember these tasks. I will, I will have them here open. I will remind Jano. But what we want from you is that now that we start coding, you guide us, you give us suggestions, you ask us questions and really improvise it. Let's make it really an improv show. Jano, are you ready to get started uh, with this task? Yes. And we will really uh -huh. help you all. We will do it together. And if once you're ready, take the screen from me and yeah. okay. then let's go from there. I will watch what Jano does. We will try to do here pair programming, but I'm also looking at your suggestions. Okay, so now I'm sharing. Good. I will rearrange here on my side so and, that I can see um, what I have here is um, two files. So this is VS Code, first of all. And we showed, um, when we were talking about Jupyter Notebooks, we quickly showed that you can actually run um, a Jupyter Notebook in VS Code. So because I will be writing the, um, the rest of the code in VS Code, um, I'm also running the Jupyter Notebook in VS Code in this case. But um, it's the same. Mm -hmm. So I have a file in this folder called temperatures, which are Radovan already showed, you can download it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have the script from the uh, from the materials. And you decided to start as a notebook, as I can see, because I can see example.ipy notebook. Yes, this is a notebook. Yeah, this is so something we've seen yesterday. I suppose and... the first thing we should do is run it because I have just copied your code from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Oh, so I hope it works in my system. I actually have actually tested. Um, sorry, I, I, I should um, talk about what I'm doing while I'm doing it. So what I did was um, choose the code refinery environment to run this code in. That's an can be an important step because sometimes you just realize that um, the libraries are missing and you don't know why. Mm -hmm. So it's important to make sure you're in the right environment. Mm -hmm. And then um, let's run all. Yeah. Okay, so it made a pot. I guess that's the correct one. And, and it created the file. Great. So this looks very good as a good starting point. And just as a reminder to everybody, some people might have joined later. The best way to participate is to watch, sit back comfortably, but open up the notes and give us suggestions on how we can improve this code. We will work with the Python code, but we try not to focus so much on the Python things, more on the big picture. We have an example that now plots the first 25, because it starts at zero, uh, measurements, that's the red line. And then the blue dashed line, that's the arithmetic mean. So the first 25 hours of the year 2022 at Helsinki Airport, the average temperature was then somewhere close to minus six degrees. Good. Now, what do we want to do next? Um. Well, okay, our task was to generalize it to three figures with different yeah. time ranges. Um, 
there anything we want to do before that? Um, yeah, I was just thinking and looking that. at the notes. So we want, indeed, our goal is instead of having, now we got to the 25.png, we, we want 25.png, we also want 100.png and 500.png. Three plots for three okay. different ranges. And how would you do it? Um, okay, so if we just want three different, so we have this number of measurements here. Um, in mm -hmm. fact, I will close the file view. It will not be very important from now on um, so that we can see all of the code. So we have a number of measurements set here. So, um, I mean, for loop. Let's start with the for loop. Yeah. And maybe before even for loop, like one, one might be tempted to, you know, change the 25 to something, run it, change well, it to yeah. 50, I run mean, it. Oh, but okay. that's not, it's a little bit tedious. If you have to do a lot of them, then this yeah. will take Also, a while. we forgot to change the file name down there. So now we, uh, we still create the same file. Um, yes. So now the other thing that one might be tempted to do is copy the file three times under each other. But that is also not so great because then we have a lot of code duplication. And oh, you mean create three separate notebooks? Yes. Yeah, or even copy the portion three times into the same notebook or three cells. But so these are not good but ideas. This is oh. um, something I will very commonly do when just um, for the first time experimenting on something or um, developing something, just put as a starting point, put the variable up here and then yeah. Yeah. Like, modify it, run again, see what yeah. happens. But of course, we want to do all of the three at once. So yeah. um, in this case, we want to do it with the, yeah. uh, in the code here. But let's do what you would do. So you, you mentioned uh, a loop. Um, yeah. So if there's any suggestions, of course, they're welcome. Not yet, but I'm, I'm watching them. But let's do, so, let's do a for loop so that exists yeah, in, in any language. Yeah, not go too much into the Python thing. So this is just a, a for loop that goes over. Um, actually, I don't want range. I'll just, uh, I'll just write in the numbers. Yeah. Because I know what they are, and I want exactly these three numbers. Yeah, I think it was originally, what did we ask there? It was 25, 100, 500. Oh, it doesn't matter okay. so much, but just that we are close to the... OK. So I can now remove this. Actually. OK, now indenting everything. So okay. that's in Python so to make sure that now we run everything times. three times. And it will actually create three plots, but there is an issue that Radovan already pointed out, which is that there is still only one file. Yeah. So, so I do need to go here and add. Um, that will not explain too much because it's that's again Python specific, but this is how I'm formatting it to be this number of measurements in, in the file name instead yeah. of just the number 25. Mm -hmm. And let's try it again, run all. So now we actually have, this is not good. Oh, yeah, we have three files that are empty. The plots here look nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Okay, that's fine. Any ideas? Let's see what people come up with. I mean, I'm already semi-happy that we have it in a notebook, but it would be nice yeah. to eventually also have the plots in the, in the files. Maybe it will become clearer as we go along. Oh, yeah, Maybe somebody suggested there is a problem with the show. Maybe we try it this way around. So somebody suggested changing yeah, we, the order here. We might not even need the show. It might. Oh, that's true. We can also try just it might always plot it. the show or commenting out the show part and see what happens now. We run. There's also this clear frame. What is it yeah. here for? Um, and I have a question to you, Jana, what, while you rerun it. Yes. So, so what are the things on top there? Import pandas from matplotlib. What is, what is happening there? Um, well, I mean, this is importing a library that handles data called pandas mm -hmm. and naming it pd uh, that's common 
um, abbreviation. And matplotlib is a plotting library. So that's what we use to create the graphs. And yeah. we, from there, I mean, it has a sub module called pyplot, Pi and we mm -hmm. rename it as plt uh, for plot. So yeah. we are using it here. So we use the matplotlib for plotting, and the pandas we really only use to read the CSV file for nothing else. Does it work now? Yes. It seems to work. Yes. Okay. Excellent suggestion. Somebody else made another suggestion that was how about we create a function that takes number of measurements as an input. Mm, that does make sense. We could put all of it into function. So um, that would be the entire contents of the loop, essentially. Save mm, the yeah. figure, create the figure, save the figure, and. Um, and then we run it three times, which yeah. Well, so maybe um, we want to do something else. Maybe possible. maybe you feel like we should have a function for reading, function for statistics, function for plotting. We could also do that. Oh yeah, you can, you can have separate fun. I mean, so those those are kind of this is a very short script. So I'm not sure if this actually makes sense or not. But um, these okay. are kind of separate functional things that you could in principle use in a different place or even move to yeah. a utility library that's not the not this particular temperature plotting library mm -hmm. um so let's just keep those separate for now yeah and this is a relatively simple example because we wanted it to be simple we can imagine that the statistics is more complicated we can imagine that the data reading is a little bit more complicated and also the plotting and we yeah. are after having these reusable building blocks that we might find useful also in other projects and other notebooks. So to read the temperatures, we need a, the only parameter we really have is the number of temperatures actually in the code currently. So let's not take too many steps at a time. Good, and in the meantime, I'm reading suggestions. There are many, that's wonderful. So yeah, we should add labels. Of... The plots don't have any labels. Mm. Writing a function to visualize and save the image exactly. That's what we are working on. Perfect. And now we want the variable called temperatures to be what we read. And uh, just give it the number of measurements. Oops, like that. Okay, yeah. let me move these two lines and see if it works. Okay, it works. Something we could do, of course, is, um, or do, well, any suggestions first? So the suggestions, there, there are many. Thanks for that. One suggestion was to put all these imports into a separate cell. So if you, if you know how to split a cell in VS Code, I don't know, you could split it at there. I don't actually know. Yeah. Or if you know how to create one above, we could yeah, I mean, we can at least create one. Yeah. Yeah, there's and that, probably that a way of but it, doing it, it. It makes it a bit mm. easier to, okay. to separate what is it the thing that comes from outside and what is our own code. So that was one suggestion. Could we define another function? Somebody suggested to do the body pay. Yeah, we could and add more functions. Oh, uh, here we could do one function for statistics and one for plotting. And then inside, when we iterate over 25, 100, 500, we could call these functions. One another nice thing we are noticing right now is that as we as we collect code into functions we in a sense also document it in a, in a way because by reading the function name, I like the function names that Jano has chosen because then it tells me what is this block doing? The one block is reading temperature. It's computing statistics. It, it helps me understanding what's going on. Then also I don't have to focus so much about the details. I can see the big picture easier. So what we see here that as Jano is adding, packaging the code into functions, we don't even need these comments like read data from file. 
the comment feels a little bit redundant. Also, compute statistics, yeah. that comment feels yeah, a bit redundant. I guess the function name could be read temperatures from file. Yeah, could be. Oh, yeah, thanks a lot also for the hints about how to split this cells and create cells. Anymore. So, um, actually, the, the way I was choosing the function names is just take the comment mm. because they are shells. So, yeah. both results. And for this, we need temperatures. What else do we need? Number of measurements. So let's remove the pod show. I'm not sure actually what this last command does. Maybe it clears the plot so that the next oh, yeah, one doesn't yeah. contain the previous yes. one. Yeah. Okay. That is useful then. Mm -hmm. um, and now this doesn't return anything. Okay, that's fine. No, it doesn't. So it's just uh, plot results. Measurement is needed for the file name. Okay. So we have I more guess, suggestions uh, and we can try more, to... but we should try okay. whether this is still working. Yeah. So this plot looks the same as before, and so does this. But we should also see something in the output of the notebook, right? Should we? Um, I mean, before we did, or we didn't? Uh, well, I mean, we saw the the plots because we had the plot.show function, mm -hmm. but right now we don't have that anymore. So Should we put the show back just that we see that uh, okay. this is like, doing anything? And later we can go back to save figure. Yeah. Just okay. to get a bit so... of visual feedback that we are still on the right track. A couple of suggestions if we have time, what you can decide is we could add axes, annotations. Right now we don't really know what's being plotted. We could also, another good hint was to add type hints to make it easier to read a function. So instead of saying yes. num measurements, we could say num measurements is an integer. Um, okay, so can do you remember the syntax for? Yeah, so it would be num measurements colon space int. And this uh, with a small, small i. Line. So this is a uh, Python type. Yeah, so we can specify types. We can also, if, for instance, the compute statistics, it, yeah, that it can get a bit complicated. So maybe a list of float and a measurement int, and it returns a float. So after the parentheses, there would be a, like a minus like an arrow uh, and then int. Oh, float, correct, correct. Sorry, float. And this can help not only programs, it can help also persons. Good. And I think we don't need to add it to everything. This was just to show that this can be done. Yes. Uh, no, this are also add... getting rather long, these lines. Mm -hmm. Now, we could add axis annotations. We could also not worry about it and more focus on the modularity part. I don't know what you prefer, Jano. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, it is kind of also modularity because right now this file doesn't tell what it's doing. Yeah. I don't know what it is if I see it. So in that sense, it, it is actually, I, I think, a mm -hmm. good point for modularity. Mm -hmm. You also remove this from yeah. Oops. Good. Let's let's add them. So then, inside the plot results, you can you can do a plt dot x label, and these are specific to this plotting library. We don't need to. So x like x axis, not a x. X, uh, x label in one word. I like how your editor gives you suggestions. And then in parentheses, what should it be? X label um, is a uh, number of measurements. Yes, so we basically know this function is now for 
or the index of measurement or something like that. Um, well, number of measurement. Yeah. Or um, index. so this function is specifically now for plotting temperatures, mm -hmm. temperature values. Yeah. As a function of time. Yeah, and then if we wanted to plot something else at temperatures, we should maybe pass so these on could, yeah. as arguments. Yes, we but could. Let's do it later. We could easily pass any any data to this and number of well, as long as it's one dimensional and it would plot it. It would just give these axes, so it's not the correct yeah. usage for this function, which means it is actually now not perfectly documented. If you look at these two lines, then you know what's going on. Mm -hmm. But we could also call this plot temperatures. All right. What mm, other ideas? Other suggestions coming in. Um, what do you think is? It's not, is it working or not working? Um, I think it is working, yes. Good. And now there my are. question to, yeah, that's better, good. And now if I open this file, yeah, it's well better. Excellent um, work. Okay. But now I have a question to, to us. If we look at the plot temperatures function, Wait a second. Ah, uh, this one? Yes. Yeah. What I wanted to hint here at is that these are not yet very reusable functions. It looks very useful. I want to use it in my other projects that also plus temperatures. And I copy paste it into my other project. But if you would copy paste this function into your other project, there would be a problem. And what would the problem be? Let's see if we can see it. The problem would be, I'm looking here at mean. There is mean being used, but it's just oh, somewhere floating around, correct. you know? Correct. Here. I did not notice that it exists. Yeah. I'm not surprised that this works at all. In fact, I think it just is from memory. Let the, can we restart the kernel and see what happens? Oh yeah, that was a good practice to do, right? We remember restart kernel, run all cells. Oh, I guess it did. Still works. It still works. And why does it work? Because we we call the computer statistic function before we call the plot temperatures function. So that's just a Python thing. We are lucky here. Yeah. Okay. So mean exists in mean is now a global variable because we are yeah. running this in just a loop in, in the cell. Mm -hmm. Okay, well that's um that's partly a Python thing and partly a Jupyter thing. Yes. Um, so what would be the, so, if I want to really make it reusable, what do I, what, what would I have to do now? I guess there's multiple options. Has anyone mm. made a suggestion? I'm waiting for them, but one suggestion okay. that I can make, so, and we yes. have some more in the pipeline is we can pass the mean. So depending on what you want, you could pass the mean as a variable, or mm. you could calculate it in the plotting function itself. Yeah. And then it would really become reusable. I think the same could be set for. Oh, good. Oh, well, let's pass it as a variable for now. Yeah, let's do it. Otherwise, we're changing the structure a lot. So we give it a mean, and we of course add it here as well. So now this is this mean, and this is the mean in the function. Oh, One more suggestion we got, which we can try, is to make the read function more reusable. We can make it read any field. So instead of reading temperature, the air temperature could become an argument. And then later, if we want to read the air pressure or the wind speed or the wind direction, we could use the same function. Okay. So that was a good one. Let's try that. Try that. So we can give it a column name, variable name, let's say column name. 
because this is still a CSV file, which mm -hmm. actually is not documented in the code directly. We are always using the same file, so instead oh, yeah. of calling oh. this file. Yeah. Should we give it a file name? Yes. Good good po good point. So we there should be both. We should give the file name and we should give the column name, column title. Let's do column name there. Provide I tried it, to yeah. scroll now your notebook, but I couldn't because of course I'm just watching the, the video. Uh, yeah. Uh, what did you want to see? No no no. It's oh you, you didn't scroll there. Uh it starts with number of measurements. Mm, okay, next step. I will probably put the file name first here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Temperature now, is file name. If this was a bit more complicated, this would yeah. make, maybe make more sense. But um, I am actually. I actually think that this is now harder to read than it was before. Well, but that's like just it. a question because this is a two line function. So yeah. having a lot of parameters to a two line function basically means you're actually just recreating the function that you're calling. Yeah, but if but it was more, a more complicated algorithm, yeah. algorithm, that would be a different thing. Yeah. And uh, let's change the name because now it's not just temperatures, it can be read stuff. It's not a good name. Read, read data from read file. Data, yeah. And we're calling here. But now we we have an okay looking code. Um, yeah. I'm checking whether we can have more improvements. There are more improvements. Some of them I didn't react to yet. Um, our goal was three plots. We got three plots. But then let's not forget we had we had one more goal, and that was we want to make it possible for somebody to run this. To change the number of measurements without changing the code and one nice way of doing it would be to add a command line interface and we will mm -hmm. show that what that means but before we do it uh, when is for you Jano the moment that you we started in the notebook but when is for you the moment that you want to maybe move out of the notebook into something else well, okay. Personally, I would start actually from a script, but since the thing was a notebook that you gave me, then I'm mm -hmm. starting from the notebook. Um, I would, I would basically have a file very early on. Have a file that contains the functions that are reusable in different places, mm -hmm. and a script, and then import those functions to the script. And then I would create a notebook when I want to share it with someone and I want them to, and they yeah. want to run it in a notebook, which is, okay. like, yeah, that, that is um, a common thing to do at some point mm -hmm. in any case. That sounds really good. So the thing on my checklist, what I would like to do is because I also want to connect it with the previous lessons. So what I want to do is I want, we forgot about Git, let's put it under Git. Let's maybe add some test, automated test. Uh, to connect it to the testing lesson. Let's think about these dependencies. So pandas and matplotlib, is there a good way for us to track those? And maybe this is a good moment that we move out of the notebook and make it a script. Okay, so there's the terminal. I have some tests here, so, okay. So now we, I think we want to now make it a script. I would probably make it a script first. Yes. Or, um, so. So we can also use the file explorer here to create a new file for the script. Oh, there was a good good comment here. We overlooked. So this read data from file is now returning temperatures, but actually that's not temperatures. That's that uh, can be any data. Oh, okay. Yes, this is now misleading. Yeah, um, good point. This, this variable name could be data, although we already have a variable called data here. So. We can also return data parentheses. I mean, we can return directly that line. Yes, that, that works fine. Yeah, good. That's better. Now Thanks. It's actually more readable because it's shorter. All right, let's make this a script. And I admit that I don't know how because this is not an editor that I work in normally. But 
Yes. So, okay, I will do it actually. I will create the file in this editor. Yeah. And I often and make things a script when, as soon as I need testing, as soon as I need a command yeah. line interface, because that becomes, uh, that doesn't really fit into a notebook. What should we call this? Plot temperatures? Good name, yeah. Let me think. There might be a better one. Well, let's go with that. And actually, what I'm going to do is, well, we do need to import stuff in a script um, on top. And then I'm going to just copy all of this into the file. And let's then see if we need to do anything else. So to run a script, you need to go to the terminal. So I have the terminal here. And if I, um, I'm in the, my code refinery folder, so I have these files here already. Um, no, let's just try running, running the script. Or should I check it that I'm in the code refinery environment before I try? Well, this is a good way to check. Um, if it fails, then it fails. Yeah, let's see what we get. It failed. No module name files. Uh, okay, so on the refinery. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see what it runs. Temperatures. Okay. Oh, ah, right. It's displaying them in separate windows now. And so now we need to trust you that it's working, right? You see it somewhere yes. else. Yes. Well, I mean, you also do have the files here, so. Good. Um, I can show you the files here. Yeah. So it does work. But I really, I don't want my script to open windows unless that's clearly what it needs to do. So mm -hmm. um, if you don't mind, I will remove this plot.show file uh, good, line good plan. Good from plan. the script. Especially since you can't actually see them. OK. Mm -hmm. So this is working. Yes, I made and, a change, so I run it again, just in case. OK, it still works. And since it's working, we want to have, if we mess up now, we want to have a way to go back. So what is a good reflex now? It's to remember last week, let's make it a Git repository. Let's make a commit. If we make a wrong step, we can always return to, return to the position where it worked. So I'm going to initialize a new repository. Git init. All right. Okay, it did. It printed some stuff, but um, it did create a repository. Yeah. All right. Get status. Uh, it, it's uh, about the default branch name thing, because I haven't set it up. Okay. So git status tells me that there are these uh, six files. Um, I believe I do want to add the notebook. I do want to add the script as well. Of course, the notebook could import from the script or from this uh, Python file. That would make sense. Mm -hmm. But it's not. Now it's, there is some duplicated code here. And do I want to track the temperature file? It's already in some other repository, but we're not automatically getting it. So I guess I do. OK, let's do that. Yeah, let's do it. That was very good. It was very good to create a Git repository, very good to commit these. So start tracking with Git. Yeah, that's good enough. Um, Let's do another Git status. So now we have three files that are not included, and those are the images, the pod, yeah. plotted images. Um, do we and we could ignore them. So they, they, it would be good to add them to .git ignore, which we may or may not do now. We can also leave it for later. Yeah, I mean, we can try to think of something else to do while I add them to .git ignore. Yeah. Now to everybody, we will continue here for maybe 10 more minutes. Then we will take a break, but then we will continue more. So we are well on the track. I really appreciate all these comments. I'm watching them coming in. Yes, it's somebody suggests also to add them to the ignore, and we read your mind, and Jano is doing it as we speak. Thanks. 
Okay, here is the Gideon profile. And here is my script. So um, now what we wanted to do is allow the user to provide the temperature values. Yeah, I wanted to do it. Let's do it later. Somebody okay. suggested, so before the break, our goal will be, let's add a test. Okay, yes, that's a very good point. And so for that, okay, there will be two more things before the break. It. Test, and also I want to do something with these the, the dependencies. Um, okay, can you suggest a test to add? So read temperatures from file, I can add a test because it, we know what the file is, but in principle, we could replace it with some other data and the yeah. thing should still work. Yeah. So um, somebody suggested that we test the compute statistics. That's a nice function to test. That is true, yes. Um, we can add it directly here or we can add a new file. Um, Let's do for, it here directly. Let's keep it simple. Yes. For simplicity, we'll do it here. And if Just, I was trying to do this as modular, uh, as a sort of good modular development as possible, maybe I have multiple scripts, I would actually have this part, the scripting part, in a separate file. We can actually do that as well at some point. We can do it as well. We have time. Because at some um, point we might feel like this is way too much scrolling up and down. And that's also a good moment then to put yes. things into separate files. Oh, yes. So that's a good suggestion. Write some random test data. Uh, what am I doing? Uh, so then I call compute statistics. Which takes the test data, oops, and how many uh, measurements we want to. Let's take the first three, just to not do the trivial case of taking all of them. Um, and then we make an assert that, oh, I actually do want to return or ca capture the return value. And then we want to check that the mean is equal to two. I do believe that's correct, but let's test. Um, yeah. So I can run PyTest for temperatures. And it didn't work. OK, great. What? Ah. Mm. So it is actually assuming that this number is, in fact, the length of the list. So oh, if yeah. I. Yes. If I pro, I pro just, I cannot oh. at this point decide I need three measurements. I already have taken the first yeah. four measurements, and I need to here take. I four think we should maybe change the, change the compute statistic function. Yeah. Yes. So here we run into a problem, and mm -hmm. in fact, it's much easier since this is a list. Well, not much easier, but much more sensible, to. Um, a length calculate the, the number of measurements here. Yeah, and you can remove this. Uh, colon int at the end of the that one good now this is being called in a couple of places here as well right so now let's try again the testing so run pytest still doesn't work because the value is 2.5 for yes. all of them Too. Okay, now yeah. it works. And here, it was actually nice that at the, at the beginning the test was failing. If the test was happy from the start, something I like to personally do, I, I like to then go into the code, change the compute statistics, make it wrong, and I want to see mm. whether the test is catching it. Yeah. But here, That's we it was failing and we made it work. We got a test to work. Let's do one more thing before the break. And that is, let's make this somehow reproducible for other people. So we have these dependencies, Mapotlib, Pandas. Yes. What is a good way to communicate to the future generations that uh, this depends on these two uh, libraries? Yes. And this, this depends on the language. And we talked about yeah. it on Tuesday. In, in the Python world, there are at least two ways to do it. One would be requirements.txt. The other one is environment.yaml. Maybe it's easier to do requirements.txt. Yes, so 
yeah, in many languages, there is a default way of communicating this. Some there's an e missing. Requirements. Okay. Dot txt. So um, we need pandas and matplotlib. Now I don't actually know which versions we have. Um, I don't know which versions this is compatible with, so I'm just assuming that it works with the newest ones. At some point it will stop working though. If matplotlib gets updated or pandas so that yes. these functions no longer work in the same way. So we could specify versions, but maybe it's not urgent right now. Yeah, so when when we develop, or at least when I develop code like this, I normally don't specify the versions because things are evolving. I want the latest and greatest pandas, and my code is changing. But at yeah, some point, I would it's done. generally want to say like pandas later or newer than something, yeah. so that I don't have to think about whether it works in the older versions. Oh yeah, no, but you. I mean, as you develop, you try it out, it works, but um, yeah. I think a good moment to add versions is when you then publish it or you put it somewhere right, on the internet, right. you share it with somebody, then then you can specify the versions. I guess, so by publishing, um, publishing would mean when you put it online with the intention that someone else might use it. Yeah, or maybe rephrasing, like the moment when I abandon this, okay, uh, that's, I put that's the versions fine. in there because then... Yeah. Or like I create a little time capsule for somebody else to discover. I wonder whether we should take a break. And during the break, everybody can do a little bit more thinking of what we do next. Uh, our goal then for the remaining half an hour will be to do a command line interface. But maybe we maybe there is more to do. So let's collect more ideas. Let's refresh, and we will be back five minutes past past the hour and more improv, more coding. So please be back for live coding and for the outro session. Thanks, Jano, see you in a moment. See you in 10 minutes for more, bye. Welcome back, half an hour left, exciting times. Are we going to make it? Are we going to solve the problem? I think we will. We are now looking at the collaborative document we collected some of the suggestions that we didn't implement yet to the bottom of the document around question 28. Please continue asking questions. So it, if something is really new, surprising, ask about it. If you have suggestions on what we could do next, add it there. And I will be watching these and I will relay them to Jano and Jano will now take over the screen with the code editor, and we will try to solve uh, at least two more tasks, maybe more. Uh, Jano, do we have the screen? Okay. So, yes, um, what would be the first task? Um, we talked about moving something to a um, to another file to um, import from there, so that it can be used in another another project or in a different place that would be one yeah. thing let's stop with that um, oh so that would be for instance i really like your compute statistics function yes this is very but, general this could yeah, be but i have my own things. plot function so what if i want only the statistics from you uh, how would you do okay. it okay so um first we'll create a separate file for it and um of course ultimately to get it to you we would make it into a um into a pack into a module or a package um or i can just send you the file so but mm -hmm. for now let's create a file for it so i will call it compute or maybe i will just call it statistics because i might want to add some other statistics things there later so this is a new file it's completely empty and i will take this compute statistics cut it yeah. And just move it here. Yeah. Supposed to view. Okay, this is very yellow. Um, lots of warnings. Yeah. And really, uh... it's not very sensible as a warning. 
Um, what was the warning? I didn't see. What is it? Um, Compute statistics is overriding a standard library module statistics. Ah, because the file name is statistics. And there is a module in the standard Python library called statistics. This is very Python specific. Uh, OK. Let's just get rid of it. Um, oh, rename it. Yeah. My statistics. And, uh, and what we do here is works in any language. We want to have a component reusable, so we put it in a separate file. Yes. Although now this will not work, right? Or will it? It will. No, this is all pure Python. We don't need to import anything. Yeah, and no, we did right. a good job. It's, it might just work. And how do we now reuse it in your original script? OK, so now definitely we don't have compute statistics here. Um, so what I would actually do, so one thing you could do is import um, from my statistics, import, import. this. And Sorry. now we have this name, so this works. Yeah, that's um, good. I actually like to do it slightly differently. So I like to say just import my statistics as stats, for example. Remove this line. And then, because this will remind me where it's coming from. So this is stats.compute statistics. Um, but this is a question of preference, and this is just my preference, mm -hmm. right? Um, but how should we test this? Should we run the well? PyTest will not pick up any tests from here, so we we uh, test it by running the script. Yeah, let's see what it still works. There is what temperature is five. Well, it ran. Um, I now have several files open here, but the images are here. Mm -hmm. And they Good. still look fine. So and this was an improvement. Let's so uh, let's add and commit the improvement. Yes, this was good. Its status. In fact, there is another thing that we didn't add yet. Mm, what was it? Um requirements. Oh. That is PyCache stuff that should go into dot git ignore. That's a Python specific generated folder. Yes, that's true. So in requirements, uh, sorry, in git ignore, we can add a cache if I wrote it correctly. Oops, git status is the command. Mm -hmm. OK, so git status now doesn't list this pi cache anymore. But we did change git ignore, so and let's also stage statistics. Okay, git status again. So now we need to actually add my statistics, but also we want to add the changes to plot temperatures. Yep. And um, let's say it's separate. Mm -hmm. module. Good. And push. Oh, sorry. No, Lots of habit. I would usually have a remote repository that I'm immediately pushing after committing. But um, in this case, we haven't set that up yet. It's a good reflex. We have many more suggestions. The next, the one that is burning most for me is the command line interface because I would yes, like to show how one can useful. do it and also why why that is a useful thing to do for many projects in many languages. So what's your favorite way of doing this? So I like a library called Click. Okay. Uh, but it's not the only way in Python. I can name at least four or five, but this is the one that I use. It's, it's something not in the standard before, library, so but it's in the... Into it, but it's good. Sorry? You have to walk me through it. I've never used this one, but yeah, it's good to learn. So. But also, if anybody tries that now or later, is that that's not in the Python standard library. So this is something we have, we yes. bring in. Oh, I this wonder what the warning means, but it's, here, it's... So it will not work um, okay. because we haven't installed it. So we need to add it to requirements. Uh, but it should be part of the... Oh, it is a part of the, okay, of the, sorry, of the I misheard. Uh, environment. 
So in that case, why is green? Is it light green because it hasn't been? Hmm, this is interesting. Let's just well, try running and see if it actually works or not. Yeah. It shows oh, how we're going does. to do okay, requirements. Fine. Um, so Visual Studio is uh, wrong. It's actually okay. also wrong about whether or not I have pandas installed in this environment. Mm. So yeah. maybe I'm just in the wrong environment with an old Python. And anyway, now I don't know don't... whether it's easy for you. But so I, I never remember how exactly how to do it, but I always copy paste it from the internet. But yes, um, I. But is it easy some... for you to share a browser? Otherwise, I can do it on my side and I dictate. Um, I mean, I can. Maybe the easiest thing is because. Or do you want to um, search? Online yeah, I wanted to copy paste an example and we adjust it. Okay, so where would this example be? It would be. Uh, and I don't see a browser, but you can see it probably. And that's if you search for click Python. Okay, I can I can share my browser window. Click Python. And that's just one of many uh, libraries that can do command line interfaces. So is my browser window readable enough for everyone? Yeah, but these are our, this is the spoiler. This is yeah, a new yeah. tab, and then we'll search for. So click Python. Click Python, OK. That's the one, one. first hit. Quick start. Yeah, click on the first link. Oh, on the first link, sorry. Yeah. And here we can we can copy paste the first block and we will adjust it. Okay. Oh, maybe take everything. Well, all that. And actually, now I remember that we might need to put everything into a main function. Hmm. Yes. That's fine. So we do need a function. Um, and a click. But we are doing well. We have fifteen minutes left, and we will make yes. it. So should we turn just this for loop into a function that takes one argument or perhaps multiple? It can take a multiple, but I'm still seeing the browser if you are somewhere else Sorry. already. Yes. So I copied this to the uh, VS code. Sorry about that. I don't see what it's actually sharing right now. There's... Yes, this is the correct window. OK, so now you see it, right? Yep, looks good. And this is what I copied in. Good. And now instead of hello let's give it a better name let's call it let's call it main or okay. yeah main and everything that comes after let's indent it into main so our main code is everything is inside a function and then there is this python way of calling itself uh, which we can do at the end and it's a little so bit python specific so we need specific. to call the main function in this python specific way yeah so we'll just add that. This is, if you've never seen this, don't worry too much about it. We we make sure that we, if we run this script as a script, it will call main. And now instead of, what do we want to pass in there? We want to pass in, mm, let's take so we, A list that contains the numbers of measurements. Maybe not a list, but one number. Because one then number. We, can, okay. we can pass in any number. Then so now instead of... We don't need that at all. So we do number of temperatures. Number of measurements. Number of measurements, yes. Default. Default uh, is maybe 20. Let's remove the default. Or remove the default, that makes sense. OK. The hot text now doesn't match anymore. Let's adjust it. Oh, and we can. Uh, we can also give it a type because we expect a integer. So okay, there should be comma so... type equals int. Okay. And we can also say that we require it. Comma required equals big true. Or like that. Good. Python true. Yeah. So we have this one thing. We can also ask how about a file name? Data. Yeah, that makes file. sense. Or input file, I don't know what is a good name. And maybe input file, in file, input, input file. Input file because yeah. we are also writing into a file. Yeah, yeah we also need to file. define an output file. So the input data file. 
and also that is required too. So prompt and help, what's the difference? I don't know where the prompt came from. Oh, help is what from I remember. The prompt came from ah. the example. The prompt is if it should ask you something interactively, I think. OK. Will you... So if you don't provide it, it will ask if you provide this prompt. So I don't know what prompt does, but I, th I think okay, we want well, required to. Yeah, OK. That's something you yeah. can test if you. And then the output prompt. file. That and maybe output. Output file. And let's call it, I don't know, image. We could improve the hot text. Also have file and name. then yeah. instead of main Just count file. name. Sorry? So line 24, we then need to now pass in these variables. Yes. So it will be num measurements, comma input file, comma output file. And these are and just the names of the variables. Yeah, and we don't know the values yet because they will be decided by whoever runs the script. Okay, so now we get rid of the for loop and remove some indentation. Okay, that's. Yeah, and now it will maybe just work. Okay, let's see. So if I run this without giving it anything, it probably will not work. But let's it, try. It should complain now. Yes. Missing num measurements. Okay. Good. And you can also see that it tells you try help for help. Let's try that one. Okay. So we Makes we sense. got now we get this command line interface. Okay. Let's it's a bit hard just to read. Give it a little bit more space. Is that's a little bit better actually? That's good. That's good. Okay. Let's well, see. a little bit more like this. Yeah. So okay. that's nice. Uh, we have now a command line interface with some help text. Uh, it tells me how to use it. It expects number of measurements, input file, output file. Let's try it. So a number of measurements equals, let's try something new. I don't know, one, two, three. 300, also good. Input file, what was that? It was temperature CSV. And output file, 300.png. And Actually, I suspense. did not do anything with the output file name or the input file name. So oh, oops. Okay. Oh, let's that's fix that. Probably worth changing. So this goes here. The output file name um, actually, all temperatures does not accept an output file name. It accepts a number of measurements, which is only used to decide the output file name. So we don't need the number of measurements, we need the output file. Mm -hmm. So let's change the function. Output file goes there, and then we just replace here. Okay, and then output file is now the third parameter. I hope I'm not changing this too fast that people are um, not following, but also that was um, not the most important yeah. thing. So, I mean, it was just getting the output file um, name to be correct. So. Let's run this command. OK. Um, so now it should have created a new file called 300.png. It's here. Mm -hmm. um, you can also see it here. And nice. it has 300 measurements. Yeah. All right. So that's really cool. And what is the cool thing about this? Why? Why did we spend time on the command line interface? And why is it worthwhile to look at command line interfaces in the, in everybody's favorite language? Well, a lot of things. But one is I can very quickly make changes and run different tests. Mm -hmm. um, another one is that I can write a for loop in bash and do it for a million different measurements or file names. Or yeah. I can do it for all the temperature .csv files that I have for like every year. Or... Yeah. We could run it in yeah. parallel. Yeah, um, we can parallelize it. The other really nice thing is that now some somebody can use it. They don't have to understand Python because they right. only need True. to be able to start this code and then they can tweak the parameters without going into the code. I think this is really nice for reusability. 
Okay, we have five minutes left. There are lots of nice suggestions. I want to just raise them. We can have, have them for discussion. I think we are we have achieved our goal. These are the things I wanted to do. If you want more time, please take it. The outro won't yeah. take so long, yeah. and this is really good. Yeah. But also, we can move to the Q and A and yeah. have a more general um, discussion about the entire workshop. Um, I think so. So. But now the question will be, who should take the screen share? Should I take it and we go from there? Mm, yeah, go ahead. Uh, just that we open up, because then we can discuss all the things that we didn't do yet. We can talk about them. Yeah, I mean, uh, the end-to-end -end test suggestion is good. Um, the problem is I'm not exactly sure how to test the um, the contents of the image file. Yep. But even being able to run it and not have it uh, provide an error is a good test to have. And script yeah. for running multiple input files is um, something you can now do from the command line as well. Um, yes. So let's talk about the multiple input files. Now we can do it. Maybe the idea was to run multiple input files in one go inside the script. I would yes. actually rather keep it as Yano implemented it, one file at a time, because then, then you can decide whether you want to run it on a batch or on one or on two hundred at a time. You give the, you have more flexibility if it does only one thing, one thing well. Yeah. About the end-to-end -end test, well, you could. You could have a. Couple of input. Files and a couple of images that are saved there. And then you compare, is the image identical to the one that I obtained? So yes, you be, can. Yeah, that's way. true. If the data is identical to start with, then you can hmm. compare to an image. That and how, how would we run it on a computer cluster? That's a great question. How, I think that connects to running this in parallel. If I have yeah. 2000 images to, to generate. Well, I mean, that, that does depend on the cluster, though. So, I mean, most of them, though, you would write a script that uses bash commands to uh, to run it, so terminal commands. And you can write a for loop or use... Um, use some... Well, I mean, there are multiple, multiple programs that can take your script um, this Python script, for example, and run it in parallel with different um, different parameters, like yeah. different input files. Yes. So on the cluster, there are ways of running many, many similar jobs. And since we turned this into a script which accepts command line parameters, we made it easier. And here One I can, thing, I can put, yeah, go another ahead. thing to note about this is that um, our main function now is not just available to when you're running it as a script. You can also run it, run this main function from another Python script. So you can import this um, plot temperatures script and then have your own um, follow for all the files, for example, and uh, or um, parallelization in Python for, and then call this main function from mm -hmm. there. So um, we basically made it available in almost any language because um, it, it can be called from the command line or it can be called yeah. directly from Python. I also wanted to comment on this question here. Could you share the code? We could now push the code to somewhere. Uh, also, if you go into the lesson material, there is an instructor guide. Now we didn't follow it step by step. We actually we didn't probably even look at it. The only thing I looked at was the checklist so that I don't forget anything important. But there is here we have different. But... Yeah, and here we have a step by step. So if you want to retrace approximately what we did, not exactly because we 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 wanted to keep it really live and improv. You can try to go through these steps, and they are discussed here. What is the advantage? How to go? with nice code highlighting. I could this also is just push a solution. this to, to GitHub. Yeah, good. 
So, I mean, if you want to publish it, then we can put the link on in the notes and then people can also see your actual um, solution. What else? We are almost ready. That was a great session. Um, does anyone want to see what using Git from VS Code looks like? Yes, I want to see. So please take the yeah. screen share. Let's go back a few steps first. So, I mean, it, it is the same thing. It's just uh, a um, visual interface for it. I will take over the screen share, share window. Um, this one, this is the correct window, yes. So there is a, a built-in interface for Git. And I will try to make this interface as small as possible for now. So it, it shows what lines have been removed and what lines have been added. Mm -hmm. um, so changes compared to the previous committed version. And I can, the simplest thing to do is to go to the Git interface and click plus to stage. So this is Git add mm -hmm. and then add a message and commit or something smooth. that, so you did the partial add, but it's also mm -hmm. somewhat straightforward from here. Oh, what did I do? Oh no. Okay. So I can add stage selected range and now it's staged a part of it. But I actually, I will just stage the whole file. Add a command line interface. Now I could try live to figure out if I can connect it, just connect this to GitHub from here. Maybe not. Mm -hmm. Maybe, this looks uh, really cool. If you take the screen. Do you use, uh, Jano, do you use then normally Git this way outside of ESCode yeah, or do you? Days, so more and more so I, I, at this point i think most of the time i use it from vs code mm -hmm. i probably need an extension for github if i want to do okay. it directly from here all right this is really neat uh Jano, any anything else you wanted to show before we hand over to richard for the summary mm, nothing comes to mind okay well Thanks so much. I mean, amazing work, Jano. Thanks everybody for helping us here. Uh, I think this worked really well. In one and a half hours, we solved a problem and hopefully we all learned something new. I will now hand over to, to Richard, but we are still here. So instructors who want to join, I think join, connect to the studio. We can have a round table debrief, but Richard will guide us through it. Thanks um, so much. Quick question, am I still sharing? If you... If I am. Yes. Uh, let me take it. Yeah, you. I, I was just saying that you probably noticed that I found how you added to GitHub. Ah, um, uh, so. okay. Uh, how did you do it? Um, I actually just went to the interface here and clicked because there was nothing more to add. It just showed a a different button here. So uh, that was it. Okay. Okay. You can see it in the video. What happened? Okay. Yeah.